Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice to see you all again. And I'm very glad that you're here to honor the new charter holders. They certainly deserve it. Three levels of exams. <laughs> Ethics, alternative investments, fixed income. You can start forgetting everything, all those like as quickly as you learned it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm Jayanta Sen, and I'm the president of the CFA Society of Nevada. And I follow in the footsteps of former presidents like Ron Shankman, Randy Campanelli, Jagdish Mehta, and others who are Blaine, who is not here. So really, um, the society owes a lot to all the people who have, over the years, built up the society. And uh, we hope that uh, the society keeps growing and we have many more such wonderful events. We are also very uh, honored to have with us today Bob Luck, who is from the CFA Institute. Richard Mandiker, our PCR. And we have many of our society members and their families. And also we have some other honored guests. So thank you all. And I would like to say that um, the society is growing and we have opportunities for volunteer work. So I hope that the new members of the society will be active. We would like to continue this work which has been done by the previous office holders. And I would like to next introduce our next speaker who is going to be Bob Luck from the CFA Institute. Bob, I'd like to thank you for coming. It's uh, inspiring that he is here and we thank him and he would like to say a few words to our new job authorities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I know this is really awkward because you all are <laughs> turning backwards and you've got great food in front of you, so I will be brief. But I am grateful to have the opportunity to be here um, to celebrate with you all tonight. I think this is one of the the most exciting events every year when we have the opportunity to uh, congratulate new candidates that have succeeded, uh, commiserate with candidates who have not succeeded, and uh, congratulate new charter holders. So um, tonight for me is a great deal of fun. This is, uh, as you can imagine, working for an organization where you don't often get to, to talk to uh, or as often as you like, talk to the people that actually are paying the dues, whether it's with their blood, sweat, and tears as a volunteer, or as a candidate, or whether they're paying it with their dollars and their wallets. We're grateful to you all for both of those things. So, um, tonight I just wanted to say a couple of words about what you all as candidates and new charter holders have accomplished. Um, and I thought that um, it would be appropriate, and obviously you all, if you want to start your salads as we go, that's, please feel free to do that. I'm loud enough that you all can probably hear me while you're eating as well. But there were, there were just three things that I wanted to mention tonight. One is, um, first is, what, what is CFA? And for most of you in this room, you've been scarred. And by, by what, what, what CFA means, or, or perhaps you have a loved one who's been scarred by that. Um, but it's really more than just a designation. Um, it, it is uh, characterized as really being a standard of excellence for people in this business. So if you're an investment professional, you want to be a CFA charter holder. It's something that really sets you apart in the field. Second, it's a mark of professionalism. It's something that um, shows that you are dedicated and that you put ethics as an important criteria in your work. Third, it's really a symbol of both knowledge and competence. It shows that you are willing to put in the hours, many of them for some of you in the room, certainly many of them for me, in order to learn something that you think is important. And you have to demonstrate through work experience that you are also competent to practice and really work for your clients. Um, quick story. Uh, about 
six years ago, I was doing one of these speeches in Canada. I was actually in Montreal. And one of the people at the end of the dinner pulled me aside and told me he was having a very difficult time at work. That he felt like his company was selling products that he couldn't stand behind as a, ch as a charter holder. And he asked me for some advice. Now, I did point him to, in the direction to talk to some others about this dilemma, but he felt as though he couldn't work for this employer and do it an honest day's work for his clients. He felt like he was selling them something that they, it was not in their best interest. And as a charter holder, he held that in a higher regard than actually you know, making a living. And it turned out, I didn't know it at the time, but within several months, he decided to resign and move to another company because he couldn't be what he thought he should be as a charter holder. I think that may be a story for some of you in the room, that you may be at times asked by an employer or a particular business interest to do something that you think is out of line. And that's one of the marks of a charter holder is we, we hold ourselves and we hold each other up to a high standard. Secondly, I wanted to talk about what you've accomplished. So for the new charter holders in the room, and for those of you that are candidates that have passed at least one of the exams, you've accomplished something significant. Um, but I, I just wanted, for these, those of you that are not studying and going through this, you need to have an idea of what the charter holders have gone through. So first, you have mastered a comprehensive body of knowledge. There are 10 topic areas that the program covers and you have to demonstrate knowledge across those in order to succeed. You've studied more than 60 study, by the time you finish the program, 60 study sessions, 150 different readings as sources. You have gone through, it's interesting, the program actually is pretty easy if you just take a look at it. From one perspective is, we tell you exactly what you need to know. That makes it easy. It makes it easy. Yeah. The problem is there are 1,200 different concepts that you have to master. There are 1,200 different learning outcomes that you're supposed to master in order to get through the program. So it's it's wide and deep. If you finish all the readings in the program, all the cases, all the study materials, there are 9,000 pages of material that you've gone through in order to get through this program. And you have passed at least the three exams by the time you get to end this. That's 18 hours of a marathon of taking a test. And if you haven't sat through a six-hour examination, you haven't really experienced life. It's a tough one. Everybody in the room that's taken one of the exams or studied probably has a story of their own. I'll tell you a quick one from, from my experience. Exam Center, Los Angeles, California, giant warehouse. I'm sitting there with hundreds of other candidates in this one space. There may have been thousands. And this is a convention center where they have exhibits and they have large garage doors that go up and down. Well, those garage doors let in things besides people and trucks. In this instance, there were pigeons <laughs> roosting around in the facility. So well, use your imagination as to what pigeons might do while they're flying around in the warehouse. It didn't happen to me, but one of the guys across from me at the table got dive bombed by the pigeons. You have not done this alone. And many of you in the room tonight have brought a guest. So I would like to just for us to take a second. If you're here with someone who has uh, is a candidate or a new charter holder as a guest, I would like you to stand up. You are the unsung heroes for your spouses, significant others, friends who have gone through this and succeeded and did all the other things while they were you know, lollygagging and studying. They were off studying. You're right. You're really off studying. I know where you are. So, so, you know, eventually, for those of you that are married or living with uh, a new charter holder, turnabout's fair play. It may be your turn now. <laughs> the third thing I wanted to touch base on was what now? And there is an expectation for you after you finish this program. It's, a, it's an end to become a new CFA charter. It's the end of a, a, a marathon and a challenge, but it's also a beginning. So first, um, I want you to, to think about being part of a larger group. 
you are part of 166,000 charter holders around the world. You're part of a global organization with members in 160 plus countries. This is truly a global passport. You can go and practice in India or China or Bangladesh, and a charter means something there. Or Las Vegas, if you want to. You're also part of something here locally, and that's really important to recognize. The volunteers in this society do yeoman's work. There are few things that can happen without a lot of volunteer time for CFA Institute anywhere. We have volunteer boards, volunteer committees who write the exams, who, who select the curriculum. We have people working in a volunteer capacity, but this local society does I mean, punches way above its weight. And so there is an opportunity for you all to give back when you finish the program, or even as a candidate, to be a part of that cadre of people that are giving something of themselves to make the local community grow and really be a part of this professional community. So I commend that to you. I would ask you to do a couple of things as well as in the charter hold. One would be to commit to be a lifelong learner. For old stale charter holders like me, if I don't stay engaged and learning, I'm going to fall out of um, the knowledge base pretty quickly. You need to stay on this. You know anybody in this room knows it's very easy to become antiquated if you don't stay in touch with what you need to know. So be a lifelong learner. Keep pursuing uh, investment information and education if you're going to be practicing in this business. Second, I encourage you really to commit to the society and to be a volunteer. And I mentioned that again a minute ago, but give a little time. You don't have to necessarily be the next president, but, but help them with the next program. The third thing I ask you to commit to is that our shared values to see if you're charter holders. You spent a lot of time going through this program as a new charter holder. You've invested blood, blood, sweat, and tears, certainly tears and time, and maybe spousal tears and time as well. So you've invested a lot. So has everyone else who's been through this program. We put a high value on integrity and honesty. We believe that we need to put our clients first, our firms and our industry second, and ourselves third. And maybe below that if you consider your family and, and your country and your God. So I, you know, I, maybe you're sixth place. But, but seriously, you need to think about um, all the effort you put in and try to maintain the integrity and the value of this for everybody else. Because it only takes one person messing up for everybody else to be painted with the same car brush, okay? Um, my first job out of school was working for one of the big five accounting firms at the time. So I came out as an accountant and I went to work for Arthur Anderson. Now Arthur Anderson was, had, was founded in 1913, had built a reputation for a, an excellence in terms of doing auditing and financial reporting work and supporting clients. And then they ran, and then in the, in the 80s and the 90s, they started doing consulting work, and that business took off. They were the primary consultant and as well as, the, as an auditor for Enron. And when Enron, when, when the shenanigans with Enron resulted in literally thousands of people losing their, their life savings, Arthur Anderson went out of business. They spent 90 years building a reputation, and in a few months, it went out the window. Now, fortunately, I didn't happen to be there at the time. I served my two years and moved on. But um, that's a story that I think we all need to live with. So I really encourage you all to think integrity first before anything else. Richard is the PCR. What's the PCR? What's the PCR? President. President's Council Representative. He represents all the societies in the Western region of America. So we are very fortunate to have him here. And Richard is just a great guy. So we just we would be very happy to have him here, even if he wasn't PCR. But he's PCR, so that's like an additional bonus. So Richard. Uh, Bob mentioned something about just how tough it is. And you know, I started my journey in 1983 and uh, a couple of misfires along the way in 1988. Uh, you know, I got my my charter. Bob's number is a couple lower than mine. And Mr. Campbell says a few numbers lower than both Bob and mine. So it's uh, it's, it's, it's 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 a tremendous badge of honor. We all. Every person that's taking the exam and the, and the new people, because I am going to pick on you to ask a couple of things, but 
there's always funny things that happen during your study period. So, as I mentioned, it took me five years. Uh, one level two exam, I, I think I'm reasonably good at reading comprehension. I literally could not read the exam. And then I find out later that the people that set the exam didn't talk to the people that uh, gave out the readings. That was just wonderful. I, I, I kept some of the questions aside when I started redoing it the next year. And there was one question in, in particular that took me from like November because I was really pissed. I can't remember if I could say that word, but I was really miffed that I didn't get it. And it took me till April the following year to get the question. But every time I looked at it, I said, yeah, you know that. So finally, after looking at the question about three weeks every month, about three weeks apart, the word the, I just skated right by the word the. I just, just went completely by, and if you just missed that one word, you couldn't do the question. And then the next year, they italicized all the words. So it was really quite funny. Uh, the scary moment I had was uh, level three. I, for the first time in my entire academic life, and, I looked at the first eight questions in the morning, and I said, I can do one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. I said, holy smokes, and just did all eight, and I was done an hour and a half left. And then in the afternoon, I saw questions nine through 16, and I was flabbergasted to see that I could do all nine through 16, so I did that, and then I waited till somebody else left, and as I walked out, my thought was, well, either A, you passed, or you got zero, so I passed. <laughs> But, so the two people here that uh, got their charter, I'm going to have some fun with you, but I'm going to demonstrate the fun first. So stand up, please. I know, I know, I know without the benefit of the doubt that you had something that was your go-to. Because your go-to. So my go-to come February, living in Toronto, middle of winter, I'm huddled up in the law library because A, the whole law library is full of a bunch of nerds, so I was never going to get disturbed. So I used to stop at a convenience store when things were really dark and I didn't want to study, and I would buy a pack of licorice, and I'd buy a 16-ounce Diet Coke. <laughs> and when they were done, that was two hours, I was out of there. So I, by the time I got in the level, you know, my third year, I just realized that I was good for two hours a night. So what was your little go-to thing that helped you study? Well, mine was definitely painting. Uh, painting. Nice. Painting. So whenever I had, like, hard times, concentrating, I found myself painting, and I'm into alcohol and watercolors. I've um, I've been to a course at UNLV like two years ago, and since then uh, I've been exploring this medium, and it helped me a lot um, with actually CFA uh, studying. And also, I had my family; um, they were very supportive. Well, families aren't go-to. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking. I was eating licorice and diet coke. So that's Definitely awesome. Painting. Yeah. What did you do to help you through those that uh, 300 plus hours as, as you were preparing? I think you gotta get outside. So I have a corgi who I go and walk, which I think is gonna get a little air, get a little refresh, wake up a little bit, a little brisk outside. Um, and classical music on Spotify. Um, there you go. Oh, okay. When everything's so loud in the office, you need some time to study. So, you know, they have good playlists. That's great. And how about you? Kind of now. <laughs> <laughs> I just played a lot of video games. <laughs> so, we all need to do something when you're digging around for three for 300 hours, you just can't do it. So, thank you very much for sharing your story. So, I mean, I mean, you chop up with them, but we do have a would you like to say something? What do you think? Okay. Hi guys. Um, so I think I stammered your heart as the one who's not able to make it. He's at work. Um, but who is he? Work? Is he? I know. So, uh, so what I would say for him is during the course of him studying for the 2 FA, we had our two beautiful children, oh, and his probably his go-to would be spending a little time playing with them at night. Oh, nice. I just want to add one thing to what she just said about children. So I divide the, the smartness of the, of the candidates. The single people like I was are not the smartest. The married people are smarter than the single people. 
but the people that have children and are married, they're the smartest, because I, I physically couldn't have done it, so congrats. <laughs> Thank you all very much, enjoyed it. Please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you, Richard. We are very honored to have you here. And next, a few words from John Shanklin, who was the president before me. If I was to describe John in a phrase, I would say he's the kind of person who makes this country great. He has integrity, he works hard, and is a great friend. And he's a US Marine. Thank you very much for being here. I know you, you worked very hard. Uh, you want me to stand out here with the camera? Can me. You worked very hard uh, for what you've done. And I, I can only say that, you know, you, you, the one thing I would say is when I finished the, uh, the program, I somehow thought when I could get to the end of the program, uh, all of a sudden wisdom was going to open up to me and I was going to understand what's going on. I've been doing this for 30 years, I still don't understand it, but it's fascinating. So you've got a lot of opportunities uh, uh, with your careers, I'm proud of you. Thank you, John. Um, John and I are going on a hike this Sunday. So we, uh, sometimes we go hiking together and just go out in the desert. And it's really a great experience. We always make it back. And sometimes we see the weirdest creatures you never knew really existed on this earth. <laughs> Just to make it back. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we move to the main event, which is the charters being presented. So yes, <laughs> all those years of work is really going to result in the charter being handed to you. <laughs> so I would like to invite Bo. We also, I would like to invite uh, Jack. Uh, Jack is going to hand out the uh, charters, Bo will read out the names, and Jack is our former president. So, um, I'll just read out the names. Sure, sure. Yeah. The first one will be uh, Chris Chen. Samar Jafari? Yeah. Hey, don't lose that. <laughs> don't lose that. <laughs> the last one will be uh, Eski Jalan. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, that's it with the speeches. And thank you all for coming. And we hope to have you all back again.